Hello guys, welcome to Introduction to Operating System. So in this course, we'll be discussing about operating system, examples of operating system, types of operating system, the functions of operating system, and the goals of operating system. So when we talk about operating system, we don't actually have a universal definition for operating system. But then in this course, we will adopt one definition that we'll be using, which is operating system is a program that manages the computer hardware and it also provides a basis for application programs and it acts as an intermediary between the computer user and the computer hardware so i think this diagram actually helps us to understand what the operating system actually is so we can see this diagram that represents the four components of the computer system so in any computer system these are the components that we have we have the computer user which is this part and we have the hardware which are this part and we also have the operating system this operating system and also have application programs so in um, a computer system these are the components we have we have four components the user the application programs <coughs> and the operating system and the hardware so these are the components that we have in a computer system but then we are talking about OS so why do we actually need this diagram to just understand OS so we have to just understand this OS is on the computer system it's part of the computer system and for us to understand what the OS does we have to just know what this diagram is about so this is the user and this is the hardware so at first there were no OS that we are using so the user can actually directly access the user can directly access the um, hardware without consulting the OS, without the thing that they were doing in the latter days. Mm -hmm. So a scientist will just write a machine code to the hardware to direct the OS or instruct the OS to perform a specific task. But then that one was a limited path in the sense that it was only the computer scientists or experts in machine language code that were able to run instructions for the hardware to operate so it was limited to a lot of people so they always came in to move this stress going to write a whole and we know machine language is actually difficult so for you to actually write machine language you have to learn a whole lot of stuff so they always came in to remove all this code that we need we have to write so we always provide that interface so if you I'm a user and I want to play a game. I just open my application, which is a game, which is called an application program. I open my game and I'll start playing the game through the OS. Then the OS will manage anything, the memory management and everything be done by the OS. So the definition that we gave was that the OS serves as the basis for the application program. So it helps the application program to run on the hardware and it also serves as an intermediary between the user and the computer hardware. And the OS also serve as an interface. You can see it's between the um, operating system, it's between the user and the hardware. So it serves as an interface between the user and the hardware. So now we don't have to write machine code to turn on our PC. We don't have to write machine code to just the OS doing all these things for us. And OS is crucial in the computer system. So right now we know the definition of OS. We have to know the terminologies that we use in OS. So the first terminology we'll be talking about is the kernel. So when it comes to the kernel, the kernel is the core part of the OS or is the core of the OS. So when you say something is core, it's a central piece of the OS. It helps the OS to operate. So when it comes to OS, we have several components that comes together to form the OS and kernel is one part of the component and it plays a crucial role of which it becomes the core of the OS. So the OS depends on the kernel yes so we have system calls system calls is a way that a program um, requests services from the OS so when you're running programming the program you need any service like the new file creating a process the program will just call upon the OS to come to its aid and that way all that process is called um, system calls and when it comes to OS we have process process so process is one of the key things that we have to know when it comes to process. So um, we all know what application program is. We know that application program is our 
games that we play, the DLC that we use to watch movies and everything. That's the application program that we have. So then application program on itself, it doesn't do anything. So that's why when the computer is there, the computer won't do anything unless you go and run or you go and click on an app for the app to start running. So the app on itself is not, um, it's an application program. On itself, it won't do anything. But immediately that you click on the app, it starts running. So then we refer to a process to be a program in execution. When the program is running, when the program is executing, we refer to that as a process. So when it comes to a process, um, we also have something that we call thread. So thread is inside a process. And what the thread does is that the thread um, is a lightweight unit of process. So let's take this example. So when we open our web browser, so this is our web browser and this is our web browser and the web browser is an application program you know web browser is an application program like google chrome firefox they are all application program but in the web browser you can perform a lot of tasks and one of the tasks is adding um, new tabs so adding new tabs so when you go to this tab you are watching youtube there when you go to this tab you have um, watching movie there this tab you have Chatting with chat gpt this tab you are doing a whole lot of stuff so this are what we refer to as thread so thread are light unit of process so inside the process there are threads inside the processes they are um, light unit process they are processes that are light that comes together to form the process so that's what we rep represent as thread and we also have the computer drivers so we know that computers or um the hardware device drivers so we know that a lot of devices like the keyboard um, and the mouse are designed and actually um, manufactured by different companies across the world or around the world. Yes, you have a lot of companies designing these hardware and the CPU manufacturers doesn't take into consideration of the hardware when they are designing their CPU because they can work with a lot of hardware. So for this to just happen, they have to find a way to communicate between the hardware and the um, CPUs when the process is running. So they have to have something called the device drivers. So inside the device controllers, we have device drivers that um, comes out to help communication between the OS and the hardware. So if you click on A on your PC, this A that you click on your PC will actually, um, the device drivers will actually interpret or actually explain that to your os for the os to understand so it helps so here is a software that allows the os to communicate with the hardware so if the os to want to display something on the screen want to display the a on the screen it will communicate to that drivers for the drivers to communicate to the hardware to um, output this on the screen for everyone to see then we also have interrupt so interrupt is a signal to the CPU handling an event needing attention. So there's a signal to the CPU indicating an event needing attention. So you can think of um, an interrupt as you studying for your exams and your mother calls you. So your mother has interrupted you and for that reason you have to stop whatever you are doing to attend to your mother's request and after that you come back to whatever you are doing. Yes, so that's how the interrupt works. So we also have dead blocks. So third box is a situation where the process are waiting, processes are waiting for each other indefinitely. So we can have multiple processes in the CPU. So this is a process and this is also a process. So this process is having E as a resource that the process is using. And this process have B as a resource that the process is using. And this process B need these resources this resource A to finish its execution and this process A to need resource B to finish its execution. So at that time, each and every one needs each other to complete. But because processes are most matter like human beings for one to sacrifice for the other, they will be all waiting for each other. So I need what you have and this one to need what this guy have and they will be all waiting for each other. And there will be a lot of process um, at the queue waiting for these processes to complete. But because they are all stacked and they don't move, 
the warfare or the other processes and for that matter it will cause a deadlock so a situation where process are waiting for each other indefinitely so i'm waiting for process b to give me um her resources and i'm waiting for process a to give me his resource so at that time we are all just waiting for each other and the waiting can continue indefinitely we'll be all waiting for each other indefinitely